watch out for me, I'm about to glow We about to get the whole nine, the whole nine We just landed on a gold mine We the new Abu Dhabi, this is our time It's crunch time! It's crunch time, baby It's crunch time Welcome back So as you may know it has been an up and down NBA season. We've had some surprising players emerge as well as decline. Decline, get injured, go down, go some down. coming up, some unexpected. All the above, right? It's been crazy. With that being said, as we have one of the biggest games in the world coming up next month as in the NBA All-Star game, so I must ask you, who do you think's been snubbed? Ooh, snub. We're going with snubs, man. Uh, to be real with you, man, the first snub that I immediately thought about was Andre Drummond. Andre I mean, Drummond. You called it, I mean, Mr. 2020. The man can get you 20 points, 20 rebounds on any given night. And so immediately I'm thinking, okay, you got Al Horford in the game who's getting you 13 points, about seven boards. And if he's going against Andre Drummond on any given night, Andre Drummond's going to give him 20 and 20. So You think Andre Drummond could give Al Horford 20 and 20? I think he can give Al Horford 20 and 20. I think he'll give him 10 and 7. Mmm, I don't know about that. But we're going to see in this All-Star game because they are on opposite end. Yeah. So, uh -oh. uh, yeah, we're going we to get a little preview of that. We're going to get into the nitty-gritty of but, Andre But now Drummond. look, they're, they're both going to be coming off the bench. Yeah, yeah. They're not I starting. Mean, at the end of the day, they're going to be on the court at the same time. And we're going to see what's going to happen. But that was my first snub. Immediately, I'm thinking, okay, Andre Drummond's going to get you 20 boards. He's going to get you 20 points. The man been working in the offseason, so I know he should have been an all-star. Yeah, he's been working. You know, and then another snub I'm going to go with was Paul George. Granted, both of these players both got in, you know, due to injury, boogie, going but, down. But do you think Paul George was really a snub, though? If Paul George was on a different team, I call it the Westbrook effect. It's that type of thing. You it's know, it's like hey, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant was an all-star. Kevin with Westbrook. Durant was a better player. Paul and George. Ibaka. Paul George is not the better player between him and Russell Westbrook, but he is an all-star. And if he were to be on any other team, he would be an all-star. But why do you think he was an all-star? Because he said the he said the Westbrook factor, but it seems like he's still getting the shots, though. Well, he's getting the shots, but it's a new system. It's a new team. He got Carmelo Anthony, who likes to hold the ball and wants to get his points. Then there's Westbrook, who, who wants to be the man at all times. And so just all those factors coming into play, it's going to affect his game, especially in the beginning. Okay, so let me ask you this. Since you say... Just not even on Drummond, but you said Paul George and his snub, which I think Paul George is probably the bigger snub of the two. Okay, okay. Who would, but I'm going to say this, who would you replace if Paul George was originally ruled as an all-star, all-star reserve or starter, sure, yeah. who would you have taken off the Western Conference? Mm -hmm. Who would you have taken off? That's a good question. Uh, I don't want to say Damian Lillard because he's been snubbed, you know, for too long and it's about time that he got in. Oh, don't get your feelings in there. He, he, he got he got to go. No, he gotta no, go. no, because he's been putting the buckets and, yeah. and he's in a small market where he don't get as much publicity. Mm -hmm. And so if he were with an L.A. Lakers mm -hmm. or a New York Knicks, the boy would be getting pub and the boy would have been an all-star immediately. You know so, what? I could back that up with Andre Drummond. He's in Detroit. Think about it. He's not playing for a Miami Heat, like you said, in New York or a Boston with that much coverage. How many times this year have you seen Detroit Pistons play? Not much. So like, that's another reason. That's another reason why snubs could be happening. Exactly. Just throwing that out there, not making excuses, but but I'm gonna tell you this, okay? Marcus, do Paul, help. Paul George should have been in there, and I would take out Klay Thompson. This year, I don't think Klay Thompson was an All Star. Clay Thompson has his games where he can, you know, put up plenty of buckets because he's a catch and shoot player. But the boy ain't breaking you down. The boy is, is simply catching the pass off of the dribble from either, you know, Steph, Steph Curry, KD, Draymond. 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 So he's <clears throat> out there catching and shooting. He'll, he'll put up buckets. Yeah. But I wouldn't say he was an all star this year. Okay. Okay. That That's sense. who I'm throwing in there. That's who I'm, I'm throwing. I'm throwing Clay out and I'm throwing Paul in. Okay. Okay. I like it. You know, so, yeah, who, who are you thinking are, are the snubs of this year? Uh, honestly, my biggest one was Paul George, like you said. Mm -hmm. 
just because, like you said, the Westbrook factor and just how he doesn't have his own floor, you know, kind of how I see it in a sense, not even to like bash him, but if you look at how Oladipo was doing like with Russell Westbrook, mm -hmm. he wasn't doing as well, but now you put him into a different system. A system with no, no other players, no right? No other players. He has more control. Just as Paul George was drafted into, mm -hmm. now we're starting to see Oladipo, first all-star appearance, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Depot. in the East, but I'm just saying, like, he's, yeah, he's yeah, an all-star. He's an all-star. He's an all-star, though. In the East, with a little asterisk. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're going to get, though. But look, Paul George, in the more competitive West, he didn't make it. But if those numbers were in the East, he probably would have started realistically. Right. Yeah, so yeah, it, it right. depends on conference, like you say, and then like national televised games and all that. Right. But right. I would say Paul George was for sure. He was the biggest snub. And another snub that nobody's even talking about is I'm going to say Blake Griffin. Mm. Blake Griffin was snubbed. Blake Griffin was snubbed, but Blake Griffin wasn't on the court enough to... He is 20 and 10. Numbers on, never on, lie. On, on any given night, he's 20 and 9. Steps. But look, look at Steph and KD, though. Look how many games they missed. Should they be all-stars? They missed the game games. Uh, yeah, but but those two are, are the top players in the league. Top five. But they missed the... <laughs> Blake Griffin is probably top 15. He's top 15. Yeah, I was say he's top 15. You know, so... Look, look, that, he should make it. There's 13 guys in the West. Yeah, but, the, but there's other guys who are putting up numbers and playing more than him. You know what I mean? But, like, but look, you can't snub who's a guy. more exciting, Al Horford or Blake Griffin in the All Star game? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you paying to see? Hey, I'm gonna go see Al. I don't want to see Al. Okay? <laughs> I don't want to see Al in the game. Honestly, I think he should be swapped for somebody. I don't know who, but you know, he's he's a center, and that's that's what is getting him into the All Star game. Is he's a center by the by the politically the correct position. Right. He's a center and he's one of the best centers in the East, which is not saying a whole lot, but that's how he made it. Saying enough, yeah. You know. Enough to get to make it. And so that's I mean, you know, another snub who people are talking about, but I wouldn't say should be in there is Lou Williams. And the reason I say he shouldn't be in there is because he's a six man. Pretty much, I Co mean, Kobe, but Kobe made it in '98 as a, a six man. He was a he was a starter. He was a six man for the Lakers. He was a starter in a six man. He was a starter for the All Star game, but he was a six man for the Lakers. He was coming off the bench. That's nice history, right? But there, I mean, but, uh, it's Kobe though. And, exactly. But think about it though. Another thing, like you said, with Lou Will coming off the bench, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't play. He didn't start the season off with the Clippers. He didn't play as many games, and he just started shining. In January, when he's making all these 30 point games, that he didn't have true. a single 30 point game going into 2018 from 2017. So, for him to be an all star just because a three weeks worth of play that he put before the voting, I mean. Right. And then with other players out, and then all of a sudden he's a starter. Yeah. You know, so, I'm sorry, Lou. I mean, you think you were snubbed, and you think you were snubbed twice. But you weren't snubbed. You're not. Either. You're not snubbed, my guy. You're a you, professional six man. You're a professional late bloomer, and that's what happened. But he is. He's a. He's a great six man. Oh yeah, for sure. He, he'll probably win six man of the year, but it wasn't enough to be one of the great all stars on that given night. I don't think right. he deserved one of those positions. Try next year. Next year, maybe. And a year after that. <laughs> Keep on trying, man. <laughs> hey, but going into this all star game, man. The whole format of this thing is something special. I really like it. I don't like the jerseys, but I really like the format of this thing. The way that the teams were brought together with Team LeBron and Team Steph, the way they picked old school style, you know, blacktop playground style, this is going to be something exciting. Yeah, it's going to be nice. You know, this is going to be something exciting. So, I mean, how do you feel this, this whole showdown is going to go down? You know, the whole showdown... You know, it's going to go down with Team Steph Curry going down. Ooh. And you know Team Steph is the underdog. They are, man. But look at look at LeBron's roster, though. He, Le got, he got KD, Russ, Kyrie, himself. AD. AD. Man. He got both the ADs. He do got both the ADs. Drummond and, <laughs> Drummond and Davis. So mm -hmm. it's like. He has a great roster. Steph does too, obviously, because you have all stars. But right. I just think they have better shooting. 
better rebounding, Ooh, better passing, that's debatable. better players. That's debatable. That the, shooting part. Ooh. The shooting, okay, shooting because they have look, Clay, because they have Clay and Steph I and even, James Harden I mean, over there. Exactly. Those three. And right DeMar DeRozan. There. And DeMar DeRozan is on. DeRozan is is a good is a breakdown player. I feel like he'll break you down and get buckets any which way. But you got Clay, you got James Harden, you got Steph. They don't Man. got no boards. Who's boarding? Who's getting some Al, glass? Your guy Al Horford. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have more than seven rebounds. Watch. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I feel like LeBron. He went into this thing thinking, I need size. I need big. And if I got big, that's how you win. Yeah. He, got, he basically got the monsters. It's the monsters against the Toon Squad. Uh, against the All Stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It's, it's the Monstars stars against the All Stars, the two squad. I feel like somebody gonna have to pull up this little this MJ role Stay. in this game. It's gonna be Steph. You think it's so? As the Steph. captain, as, as the, captain. the captain, as the captain, either him or James Harden, one of them two, mm. they're gonna will them to almost victory. And see, that's where I'm going with James Harden because James Harden is unstoppable. I mean, he's an offensive machine. He ain't got to play D, you know. He going to have some people behind him to play D. Who plays D in the All-Star game? In this game, I feel like there's going to be defense played. Defense. And spe defense. defense. Especially by Team LeBron. With yeah. all them big old boys. AD and AD and KD. And Kyrie. And Kyrie ain't got no D. But <laughs> I feel like they going to really try to lock down and play some defense. Um, I think the dark horse and, and the X factor for this game for Team Steph is Giannis Atetokounmpo, the Greek freak. You said his name right. Hey, I've been on it. You Ooh, know? the Greek freak. I've been on it. <laughs> I've been on it. But really, though, I think he's going to be the uh, the X factor because he's probably going to be the one who has to guard LeBron yeah. simply because he has the size to do that. And uh, it's going to be a team effort to guard KD. You know, he may guard KD, though, because the height. Yeah, but, I mean, LeBron's a beast. LeBron's a beast, and he's tall, and he's big, and, and Giannis gives him some some troubles just because of his length, you know? Yeah. So that's what it's going to be, and KD's going to play the two. Yeah. You know, LeBron said it. He got a seven-foot shooting guard. That's that's unheard of. And so, man, the monsters are going to come with it. They're gonna come with it. See, and and what I don't get is why Steph Curry, Steph, bro, AD, meaning Anthony Davis, was the MVP of the All Star game last year. Why didn't you pick him up? You know. Think about, but think about the picks though. It probably went KD. Then who you? He probably got Greek Freak. Then it probably went AD. But he only picked. Greek but either Freak way, LeBron's getting the time. Greek. LeBron's gonna get the Greek Freak if you'd have got AD. So then what would you have said? Either way, it would have been over. Yeah, but then at the end of the day... LeBron at the first pick. The Greek Freak would be coming off the bench. Nah. What's he gonna For play Team the LeBron? What's he going to play the four? He's not coming off the bench. If you got KD and you got LeBron, KD at the two, LeBron at the three, is is Greek Freak going to play the four? He's going to have to or the five. AD's going to post him up and, and, and dominate him. You got to think about these matchups. Steph, I mean, I know... I know he probably, I think he picked James Harden pretty high just because of his offensive prowess. But, man, he should have thought bigger picture. He's an underdog because of the way he picks. I'm going to say that Team LeBron is going to win this game. Team LeBron is going to win final score 153-137. <laughs> no D played. No defense. It's no defense. Come on, now okay. it's in L.A. When it comes down to it, at the end of the game, they're going to be deep played. Off there top. Is. And you know what? Speaking of games played and coming down to deep played, Whew. we have to get into what's coming up this week. Super Bowl 52. 52. 52. Hey, Tom Brady, man. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All... You already going to say it. What's going you what's gotta, gonna happen? I'm just saying Tom Brady, man. Tom Brady is going down as the GOAT. I mean, just for being in the Super Bowl. But is he going to win the Super Bowl? And that's the thing. Tom Brady is a monster. The way he came down and won that game in the last game, it's predictable. And he does it every time. So it's like, how can you bet against it? You know, how can you go against he, Tom Brady? He when has he lost twice, time? though. 
He has lost twice, and he actually should have lost more than that. Yeah, should have lost four times. Yeah, he should have lost four times. But at the end of the day, he has Kobe, and he's growing an extra finger for that sixth one. Is he's on Jordan status? He's on almost. I mean, he's in it. He's in it to win it. And I'm gonna say this: the Patriots are a really good team, and when it comes down to it, execution is their thing. You know, when that second half hits, they have made so many adjustments. They've they've understood what the defense has given to them and what they're going to give them in the second half, and they just know how to break it down. It's a science that they have down, this second half execution. So you're saying the Patriots are unstoppable. I'm not saying they're unstoppable, but I'm saying in the end, they always come down and win it. Basically, if it's close, don't bet against Tom Brady. You cannot. But if it's close, can you bet against Nick Foles? Psh, come on, bro. Nick Foles is Nick Foles. At the end of the day, Nick Foles wasn't the starter. And Nick Foles is pretty much just trying to take this Super Bowl team, this Super Bowl D, this, this Super Bowl offense, these weapons that he has. And he's just trying to make sure that he does the right thing in order for them to win. I don't think that he's going to take too many risks. I think he's going to throw a lot of little short passes, hand it off. Yeah. You know, he's going to do what he needs to do in order for them to stay in the game, but he's not going to take too many risks. So who do you have winning the game? I got the Pats winning the game. And, you know, it's hard to go with the Pats because they've done it over and over and over and they beat our Seattle Seahawks, you know, it's, yeah. it's hard for me to go with that. But at the same time, it's hard for me to go against Tom Brady when I witnessed him do it over and over and over. You know, and Bill Belichick, I mean, it's, he's a mastermind in this game. Yeah. I mean, you make a pretty good point. Hey, hey don't, let me, don't let me sway your mind. No, 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 you know, and I don't, and I get that, you know, New England, they faced the quote-unquote number one defense in the league a couple weeks ago, and they came back from that, which was great. I see this coming down to it, and I see Nick Foles and Alshon Jeffrey connecting late, late in the fourth, to clinch the game. I'm not going to tell you if they're already going to be up a little bit, if they're going to be down. But mm. I can see a connection to where game's over. I call score 27-25 Philly. Ooh, 27-25 Philly. Oh, hey, Philly fans are praising you right now. Hey, they're don't praise you me. right now. Hey, hate me, because after Sunday, I'm back against you. <laughs> <laughs> you back in office again? Okay. Hey, hey it's hey. just for one day. <laughs> this would be a great story if this were to happen. It's like the Kaepernick story, what Kaepernick almost did. What he almost did. But, yeah, it would be a great story where the backup comes in, he does his job. It's a Tom Brady story. How he got his first ring. Mm. Remember, he got his first ring as a backup with Drew Bledsoe. So, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. That could be cool. But it wouldn't be the same type of story because Nick Foles is not going to be the starter <laughs> next year. <laughs> but I'm on Nick Foles' head like I was on Blake Bortles' head. I'm bashing his ass. <laughs> Because Nick Foles is not the guy. At the end of the day, Nick Foles can either throw three touchdowns or he'll throw none and three interceptions. And this this Patriots defense, the way they showed up last game, in the end, you know, Stephon Gilmore? Yeah, Blake Bortles, though. Who are you picking, Blake Bortles or Nick Foles? I call him even. I call him even. But he got he has different weapons than the Jaguars though. You're absolutely right. They got right. way better weapons. Yeah, they're a more right. balanced team than the Jaguars. You're absolutely right. And I feel like the Philly D is very underrated, and I think that they'll give Tom Brady some problems early. But at the end of the day, after that second half comes, Tom Brady is another beast, and that defense is going to step up. Now, what about the Patriots defense? Because they're not really good if you think about it. If they you sealed think the about game it, last, last week. They sealed the game. I mean, they haven't played an offense like the Eagles, though. They no, have not played an offense right. like the Eagles. You're absolutely right. And but, the Eagles have seen a better defense than what they're going to see this week. But that's where I'm, I'm, I'm going with Bill Belichick in that, in that mind. I just feel like those second-half adjustments will, will make a huge difference. 
Philly fans, you know, it's been a great run. And New England fans, it's been a great run. You guys did a you guys did a great job, but He's wearing well, the green, I Philly! I don't feel like uh Green now? I don't feel like this is gonna be your year. Maybe next year he'll start his decline and he'll give way for other teams. Um, maybe even the Jaguars, but at the end of the day, Tom Brady is the GOAT. Bye. And there you have it. Tom Brady's the GOAT. Yeah, I, I can't. Those Super Bowl predictions, man, hey, they can go either way. They hey, can go either way. You've got pretty much the best against the best, and this is how it should have been. Yep, one against one, mano y mano. So there you have it. We gave you the all-star game. We gave you the Super Bowl, man. Big games coming up this weekend, man, and next. So stay tuned, man. Stay tuned with us because we know what we're talking about. We're going to give you that knowledge. We're spitting that fire. Fire. I'm telling you, man. Stay tuned with us, and, and we're going to give you what you want. We out. Oh, as in Brady said, pants out. Drops Mike.